Okay. And um, in 1984, you left pro wrestling for a while and returned back to active duty with the uh, with law enforcement. Um, what was your reason at the time for completely leaving the wrestling business? Well, no. I was a cop up here in the Pittsburgh area from 73 to 83, and that's, again, that's when they used what was called local talent. So I always used the wrestling as my side income. Uh, I stayed in law enforcement and transferred to Atlanta PD, or uh, Metro Atlanta, and that's, that's where I wound up meeting Jerry Blackwell and, and people that Jerry Blackwell, Abdul the Butcher, Dick Slater, Mr. Wrestling 2, that's when I got my so-called push. Uh, Jerry Blackwell uh, more or less took me under his wing, and, uh, and, and that style, when you talk about working stiff, that's what I was comfortable with because when you talk about working with uh, the Jerry Blackwells, Abdul the Butchers, Bruiser Brodies, it, it, was, it, it was a brawl. It was stiff. And, and wrestling too, you know, you know I, I, if I didn't mention these guys, I, I would be negligent because they, they, uh, they played a huge influence uh, on giving me my actual first push. So back to the question, did I leave law enforcement? I never left law enforcement until I actually went to the WWF, the now WWE. Now, my next question for you, of course, is uh, how did the Big Bully Busa character come about, and whose idea was it? Well, you know, it's actually uh, kind of funny because I, I knew, uh, like we, when we started this interview, and you guys are around the business, and, the, and whoever was listening, certainly they love the business also. I knew if I was ever going to make it in the business, you know, it was time for me to attempt to do something. Certainly my type of physique uh, you know, I, to dye my hair blonde or go with any type of gimmick like that certainly wouldn't work. So what I what I had done is I made a list of wrestlers that had my type of physical stature: Bulldog Briar, Crush Lazowski, Bruno, uh, guys guys with that type of, of physical structure. And then I then I came back to my old setting here in, in the Pittsburgh area in the tri-state area, and I had mentioned earlier the steel mill towns. Well, you got to understand, in these steel mill towns, there was a shot and beer joint on every corner, if not two or three, in all these cities. And I made a list of the characters from the years that I was a cop up here, because it was, it was Friday and Saturday night at the fights. I mean, these guys would get drunk and the fights were on. So I made a list of these guys and what their mannerisms were and their characteristics. And, and most of them had a mustache, smoked a cigar, and wore a hat. So I incorporated that into it, and then I watched some Warner Brother cartoons, and uh, I, I came up with this character, and that was the look. Uh, I just didn't know what to name the character, and uh, Joe Pettisino, uh was had taken over uh, Georgia Wrestling uh, and after Jerry had it, and Joe said to me, you just described a bully, and thus you got big bully music. Oh, okay. And that's when and that's when we were getting ready to they were they were working on putting the GWF together at that time. Now, I'm glad you actually brought that up because that was leading into my next question. Now, um, of course, while you were with the Global Wrestling Federation, you got the chance of working against uh, Chaz Taylor. A lot of people feel that he never got the push that he deserved. What are your memories of working with him? Well, Chaz was great. I, I mean, I I remember Chaz. Uh, you know, Shawn Michaels used to, uh, when he was down in Georgia, he he always used to say, loosen up, brother. And I knew that, that Chaz was going to work similar to the way Shawn did. And uh, so he was he was very good to work with, type of guy you could stay in the ring with uh, for hours. So uh, my memories are all good of Chaz. Now, of course, uh, you know, and you even stated this on your Facebook page, um, you had a match uh, with Bruiser Brody, and during the match you guys brawled outside and the cops were called. What was the reason behind that? What are your memories of that match? No, that was with Abdul the Butcher. Oh, okay. Uh, th there was a match, uh, one match with Brody. Uh, in fact, if you do a YouTube search, it's Dick Slater and Bruiser Brody, but 
it turned out that gentleman Chris Adams and myself came in and we had a tag team match. And, he, and if you watch that match, you'll see Brody hit me with a chair. And when I tell you he hit me with that chair, I mean he blasted me. And then uh, also you'll see a, a kick to the head in that match, which almost knocked me out. And then uh, same thing with Abdullah. I mean, uh, Abdullah, you know, these guys are big men. I remember Jerry Blackwell, Abdullah the Butcher, you know, they used to love to blow guys up. And uh, I remember working on that match that you just referred to. Abby and I were working somewhere in Atlanta at some theater, and, and Ron Simmons was actually uh, in the crowd, too. And uh, anyway, we're, we were all over the place, blood flying everywhere. Uh, I mean, Abby was hitting me with everything he could get his hands on. And, and the owner of the theater, he didn't know what to do. We wound up in the parking lot. Next thing I know, I see blue lights coming. Here comes the cops. And I'm going, oh, man, we're going to go to jail. <laughs> so anyway, we worked back into the uh, theater and... Uh, Went home safe and sound without getting locked up. That's funny. <laughs> now, um, what were your memories of working for the Worldwide Wrestling Federation? You mean when it was the WWF? Yes, um, but like back in the 1970s. Well, it, it, the the business had territories then, and and I like I said, I was very young in the business. I know they had. Uh, I got to go do TV a couple times, uh, and and I just remember that you know that we would use local talent, and I would go in, sit down, and shut up, and uh, do what I was told to do. That's my memory of it. But you got to also understand that I, that I was young and uh, I was starstruck when I would walk into those locker rooms. You got to remember I was such a huge wrestling fan that it took me a long time. Uh, well, in fact, I'll tell you how how I stopped becoming starstruck. Jerry Blackwell finally grabbed me one day and said, Nick, we're all just one of the boys. And that's that's when it sunk in. All right, so you you were one of the uh, very, very you're on the very short list of wrestlers to work for both Vince McMahon senior and junior. Um can you just talk a little bit about the differences between them? Maybe uh if either one of them was better for than the other to work for? I don't remember having any conversations with Senior uh, at all. Uh, when the bully was introduced and hit ESPN, uh, it wasn't, wasn't a week later that, that I got a call from New York. And uh, next thing I know, I was on a plane and on my way to Vince's house. Uh, when I landed, uh, my wife had told me that the Atlanta office, NWA, had called. Uh, now, coming from the WWWF, uh, I felt like I was home. When I got to Vince's house and, and we talked and we discussed, uh, I just felt like I was home. And, and, uh, and needless to say, I was anxious to work. Uh, you know, I wanted to work. Uh, the character, Vince loved the characterization. And uh, he, he put me on the payroll immediately. I didn't have my first match for about six months after he put me on the contract. Okay, and at this time when you were working for uh, Vince Jr., um, that was a time where Bobby Heenan was not really a manager anymore. He was primarily an announcer, and you were paired with uh, Harvey right. Whippleman. He was the, at the time he was really the primary heel manager. Um, how did it feel to be paired with uh, at, at that level with him? And uh, just maybe a couple memories of just kind of uh, spending time with him. Well, I I really didn't know uh, Harv until we got up there. I knew he was friends with Sid, uh, coming from Memphis. Uh, Sid and I were tr training partners uh, along with the Iron Sheik. And uh, so uh, they wanted to put him with somebody, and, and they did. And certainly uh, Big Bully Busick gave Harvey Whippleman the, the push that was needed to get him over. 